Ray, I've been following the discussions mostly among uh, uh, techno futurists and Silicon Valley about uploading our minds into uh, silicon or other non-biological uh, media uh, as a way of achieving some kind of immortality. And people approach it much as an engineering question, uh, which I, I reject. Um, and so I look at your view of, of the uh, of human mind consciousness as, no, as, as, as not a materialistic reductionist on the one hand, but not a dualist on the other. And so I want to ask you, using this probe of, of virtual immortality, of uploading our first person consciousness, do you think that's possible? I don't think so at all. I think it was G.K. Chesterton once said, a madman isn't someone who's lost their reason, that they lost everything but their reason. <laughs> and you can see how the notion, uh, transhumanist notion of uploading a self onto different media and getting rid of the disgrace of the biological body, how that would attract to, to reasoning machines, reasoning machines in California and so on. Uh, what's wrong with it? First of all, it believes that somehow consciousness is computational, that it's about information in the narrow Shannon and Weaver sense, which clearly it isn't. And Shannon and Weaver are very clear to separate their idea of information uh, from the broader idea of information where you have a conscious informant uh, and a conscious informee. So first of all, there is a mistake of reducing consciousness to information. The second thing is, it's almost like Swift's uh, Gulliver's Travels. It's almost a carbon copy of what happens in the Academy of Legado, which is the idea then you can extract from the brain information. Now, how would you do that? What state would you have the brain in? Well, the brain is changing all the time. So what are you extracting? Are you extracting information from the brain of someone running, someone lying down, someone looking to the left, someone looking to the right? In other words, you'd have to somehow freeze what's going on to the brain and then make that frozen slice, if it was information, as it were, stand for the whole history of the brain. Well, it would continue from there. I mean, you'd have to, you'd have to when you upload it, you'd upload it at, a, at a, uh, a snapshot of time, but then it would have whatever powers it has to, to continue. The notion of the snapshot is precisely what the problem is, because the brain isn't, well, the mind is never in a snapshot state. It's always connected to its past, explicitly connected to its past. But that would be embedded by your memories in the brain, that if you could upload it. I mean, that's why these people think it's an engineering problem, that if you could re reproduce the exact position of every atom and subatomic particle in the brain, or at least where information is meaningful at whatever level, there are differences of opinion, but whatever level is meaningful, if you could capture that in, in a nanosecond and upload it, then from then on it would continue in its own way. So the snapshot encompasses not only the state that the brain is in now, but also, as it were, its inverted commas, memory of where it's come from. Yes, sure. How on earth would that be? It can be either one or the other. If I'm looking at you now, I'm either seeing you now, or I'm, as it were, recognizing you as a person extended in time through our relationship. And you can't have both from the same snapshot. And actually, there's a bigger point behind this, because the brain, not the brain, the mind, is quintessentially deals with tensed time. And there is no tensed time in the material world. Don't take it from me, take it from Einstein. He said it very clearly. So somehow, you've got to extract from a snapshot on a material object, not merely an instantaneous mm inverted commas now, and it's not really a now in a material object, but also the temporal depth that comes with a mind, but not with the material object of the brain. The idea being that the temporal depth is, depth is, is encoded within our synapses or whatever else that can co co compose our, the totality of our memory, and that's I, a physical I love that, representation. I love that word encoded, of course, because <laughs> it stands for absolutely everything you can't otherwise do. <laughs> when you talk about encoding, we need, obviously, decoding. Where's the decoding going to come from? You say from another bit of the brain? Yes. Well, so in other words, somehow the brain cooks up something that's not otherwise available in material objects, namely tens to time, by a process of operating decoding on itself. All of this, by the way, is going to happen, not in the brain, of course, but in a piece of plastic or whatever it is, yeah. the new medium yeah, sure. uh, where the uh, mind is because downloaded. It, if, the, if the mind is only physical, then it has to be represented by physical things, which are particles and forces and relationship between them. I mean, it, it may be wildly um, beyond current science. I, 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 even if it were true, it, it, it wouldn't be decades, as some people think. Mm. It wouldn't be centuries. It might be millennia or even more. But the question is, is, is it possible in principle 
Well, you've just said if the mind is only physical. Yes. And of course that uh, assumption uh, is one that I would refute because if it was only physical, then of course there wouldn't be such thing as tense to time in the mind. We would just be in the same situation as the rest of the physical world where tense to time does not exist. I, 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 I'm having trouble uh, uh, quickly agreeing with that be, because tense time is something that I, I have a... I, I, I have a representation of it in my, in my brain. It's not like there's some kind of reality, it's, it's my representation that's there. And again, you've used another word, representation. That, is, that sounds terribly anthropomorphic to me. It sounds as if you're getting free, the, precisely the kind of things that minds do, but <laughs> material objects don't do. When a mirror reflects something, it doesn't really represent it in the way that, as it were, I do when I'm reflecting on something or thinking back to something in the past. Uh, I have to ask, what's your alternative? Uh, to uploading. Yes. Oh, well, exactly. It wouldn't be nice if it was possible. Or, I mean, I can't get enough of Raymond Tallis. A lot of people are sick to death of him, but I can't get enough of him. So if I could be uploaded and endlessly replicated, that would be wonderful. One or two other problems there, of course. I mean, I hope my world's being uploaded with me, and Mrs. Tallis is being uploaded with <laughs> me, and we're all set in the same kind of spatio-temporal thing so we can get on with chatting and so on and so forth. But it actually looks a bit of a lonely business. What you'd seem to, if, if it was possible, which I don't believe it is, you'd have presumably a whole warehouse full of solipsists. Uh, I, I, think, I, think every, I think the uploading is, is a solipsistic view where, where you would have uh, Mrs. Tallis there, but if she really wouldn't be there, it would be your um, uh, illusion of her. E yeah. Even if your reality was a reality of, 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 of this information that is your, your, uh, your upload, uh, your uh, relationship with your wife, is, is that's clearly an illusion because she wouldn't have to be uploaded as well. So you're not doing a very good job at selling the product? No. Right. No. I mean, I'm not too sure I want to buy that kind of immortality. Uh, 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 but do you think that's even possible in principle? Is it possible that your first person understanding, knowing who you are right now, your internal sense, uh, in principle, forever, a, a million, billion years from now, with all the best science could be done? Your thing really is my first person sense of self boiling down to some third person or indeed no person set of properties of my brain. Yes, to which exactly. the answer is no. Yes, yes. And, and, uh, and what is the fundamental reason for that? Well, well, let's take the transhumanist idea seriously and literally. I think they'd like us to do that. What they're trying to do is they're essentially taking a snapshot of essentially a frozen brain. From that material object, they're extracting material states. No person impersonal, third-person material states. Well, well, wait a minute, but they, they would say that those, uh, that information, that those trillions and trillions, however many facts of the physical information are those of, of, of a personal representation. There is nothing else. Again, the use of the word information. Uh, we know in the Shannon Weaver sense what it means. It's something to do with the efficiency of machines, essentially, and the value of the machines to people who are using them. But we know information when it applies to me. If I'm reducible to information, it's not information in the Shannon and Weaver sense. It's information in a different kind of sense. It's conscious awareness. And it's that which seems to me not able to be transferred. You can't transfer that present moment, if you like, of the brain, which doesn't even have a present moment in the sense that we have, to another surface where that present moment is replicated, then somehow flowers out into something that has its past and its future. Well, we know that all the information can represent our memories, however it's encoded in the structure of molecules within neurons or in the synapse or circuitry, that, that those kinds of things can be captured. And so how do we then uh, unify those uh, things that can be captured with what you seem to have as this nebulous kind of first-person consciousness thing, which the people who believe in virtual immortality would say that there is nothing else other than this information, that once you capture all the information, difficult to, and maybe underestimated how difficult it is, but once you capture it, then you have the first-person con uh, 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 consciousness. Mm, those are, that, that's just a straightforward assumption with which I would disagree. I don't think information in the Shannon and Weaver sense corresponds to first-person consciousness. So, so whatever you, you have to add something to it. Well, I wouldn't start from there, basically. 
it seems to me that there's no doubt about it that I have conscious experiences. Yes. But the idea that those conscious experiences correspond, as it were, to specific states okay. but of can... me, and not only conscious experiences, but also of all my propensities, characteristics, habits, memories, sense of the future, all of that is available by extracting a particular slice of the brain's activity. It would not be impossible. At least we'd have to have the history of the whole brain's activity to generate that. Well, it's conceivable you could have that. If, if but it would you take... believe all these things are generated by physical mechanisms, so if anything is physical, it should be capturable by physical mechanisms. And wildly, in advanced science, you know, thousands, millions of years. In principle, though, if everything you're saying is physical, it's ultimately capturable. Well, I disagree with both those. First of all, I don't think I'm saying that everything is physical in the sense of, e.g., neural activity, nor do I agree that everything that is physical can be capturable in the way that it can be replicated on another medium. I don't even think... Well, if I... it's not physical and not capturable, how then is it interacting with us? It has to, it has to interact with our brain. I think that's probably true, but I'm not too sure that that's the whole story. Again, the brain is a necessary condition of what we are, but it's not a sufficient condition. It isn't the whole story. And it seems to me you cannot get a self steeped in time, a self that has inescapably temporal depth, from an instantaneous slice of the brain, from an instantaneous moment of the brain. You, you'd have to have something to unpack the past, the future, mm -hmm. characteristics, standing states, and so on, from that. But that's and what I'm doing right now. I, I, I have a standing state of my brain. I don't have access to the past. I have access only to my memories of the past. I'm not too sure that that's what you are actually doing. I don't think you are doing that in that sense. I don't do my processes of memory. But we, the transhumanists, would basically say if we have a slice of the activity of the brain, then this itself yes. would then be able to unpack itself yes. in time yes. and yes. so on. Yes. And that seems to me highly implausible. It only becomes quasi-plausible when you use words like decoding and encoding. But of course, that again is a highly charged word. You know, decoding and encoding are things that are typically and primarily done by conscious beings. So, in principle, you'd bet that uh, virtual immortality is, 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 is a, a permanent uh, um, a pipe dream. Certainly that approach, absolutely, yes. I don't know if there's any other approach on offer at the moment. <laughs> so I'm very sorry, thank you for the offer of basically uh, promising to capture me on a computer medium, but I don't think what survived will be anything like me, or indeed anything like a human being, or indeed anything conscious.